Hello, my new pathophysiology students. I'm making this short video here to introduce myself, begin the class. It's Wednesday, the week before classes start, but I want to get this to you so you guys can prepare. It's going to be six weeks of intense pathophysiology. And uh, as it's all online, you guys are going to have to be motivated to uh, study on your own, keep up with this. But uh, I'll give you the syllabus, the outline, very simple. I'll, I'll email you every week um, just to let you know what's going on that week. Uh, but it's uh, pretty straightforward, as you'll see. So here, let me uh, go ahead and uh, get started here. Let's see. There we go. So yes, it's uh, just got done teaching anatomy physiology. And uh, I agreed to teach pathophys, which I did for the first time last spring, which it was going to be online then too, and got just, uh, I mean, in person, but it got pushed online. And then uh, this semester, they wanted to do that as well. So that's good. So I will be uh, recording lectures for you. I'll use some that I, I made last semester, but already number two, I want to re-record. And so... Um, Anyway, you guys will have lectures from me to, um, to listen to, the book, it's all, everything is set up really nicely, as long as you guys put in the work and we're going to uh, study this stuff. And you look online, you look at YouTube videos that talk about, a lot of my, a lot of you guys are nursing students, talk about it being, you know, a, a difficult course, uh, it, there's a lot of material, um, it's true, but um, uh, I'll make it as easy as I can on my end, so. So today, again, this is just a short little thing. It's not even chapter one. I got a chapter one lecture for you, but uh, yeah, I'll introduce myself. That's not a line. There, the pen's working. Um, so I'll talk about myself because uh, you guys are going to be listening to me. Uh, I really miss not. Um, getting to talk and meet you guys. It's strange talking to a computer, but hopefully we can Zoom. I'm available anytime, you know, day or night, weekend. It doesn't really matter in this uh, summertime. Um, and uh, so I get to maybe get to know some of you and correspond, but you know, if you guys have no issues, you just learn it, you take the test and you know, I may never uh, talk to you. Very weird way of teaching, not, not my favorite, but um, so yes, talk about me. Uh, so. Indeed, and then uh, anatomy physiology is an important prerequisite. You know, that's not just one of those, well, we should throw in a prerequisite. I mean, I'm not gonna teach you all this again, for some of you, I'm not gonna teach all of heart physiology and kidneys and digestion, all that. That's assuming you guys paid attention. And I may talk real quickly, you guys remember this, but I'm gonna get right into the uh, disease part of it, the pathology of it. I'll talk about big picture stuff today. Uh, and then the course, how it's structured, most importantly, how you guys can get started and, and how you can do well. All right. All right. So I've been at UNE, I think it's going to be my ninth year coming up here. And um, I was born in Syracuse, New York, and I uh, live in suburbs of Chicago. Went to school at Illinois Wesleyan, Illinois State, University of Kansas. I taught in, uh, in Iowa and Missouri State. And then here I am. Love it up here. I like to hunt. I like to fish. I like the outdoors. Uh, it's, it's a good place to be. I'm pretty happy. Um, my wife is Lindsay. And so uh, she's a pharmacist, recently graduated pharmacist, did a residency and all, and uh, works at a hospital. So if you hear me talk about, I know a lot about drugs and uh, nurses and uh, doctors and how, how it all works. She works at Portsmouth Hospital, Regional Hospital and uh, at Mid Coast too. So anyway, so that's if, giving you my background as I. I hear a lot about pharmacy and drugs day in and day out, you know, all right. Um, indeed, yes, I have not gotten lucky with the brook trout this year. And I, I, I have a boat, I do, do a little lobstering, I have a motorcycle, um, I like to camp. Uh, and my research was on reptiles and amphibians. Uh, I studied the tropical frogs in Peru, dissecting them, looking at their anatomy and looking at their diets and doing, ecology study, seeing how they, these 70 species coexist in one spot. Well, here in Maine, we don't have as many, but just got done with this big night. And uh, that's, if you don't know what that is, you can look on Facebook, Big Night Maine. And it's where you go out and in the spring, the salamanders and frogs are crossing the roads, getting to their breeding ponds. So I'm part of the, 
scientific advisory uh, council there, you know, kind of directing this last few years. And we just got a paper accepted looking at how COVID last March, uh, April, uh, looking at uh, comparing to the years before and after how there was very little, there was half as much mortality on the roads. Less of them were getting squished. And you look at the traffic data, no one was traveling. This was April of 2020. You know, and it was everyone is, you know, on lockdown and such. And so it actually benefited uh, wildlife to have humans, you know, cooped up. All right. So, and I, I study, uh, collect skulls and uh, bones and yeah, so I'm big into that kind of stuff too. All right. So indeed, I, I got my um, uh, undergraduates. I thought I was a biology major. I like to like out go the outdoors with my grandpa in northern New York. And uh, so I thought I'd be pre-med. That sounds good. So I started out that way and then organic chemistry and um, kind of a love, more love of nature than, than, than helping sick people. And, and for those Many of you out there, hopefully you have a little more, you know, compassion to want to do that, right? Uh, but uh, I liked the, I like going to school. <laughs> I like learning and stuff like that. So I, I just kept going. I got my uh, master's and finally my PhD at the University of Kansas in uh, tropical herpetology. So studying <clears throat> snakes and turtles and frogs. And while at, actually even my master's and PhD, I uh, taught the human cadaver lab. And so that's how I made money. And uh, I really, uh, I was hired really because I could dissect humans and cadavers and that, that kind of thing. I mean, originally, not at UNE. All right, so like I say, I've been teaching here anatomy physiology, one and two. And related to that, histology is microscopic anatomy, of course, comparative anatomy. Again, I've dissected a lot of cadavers, so I have a high level of knowledge of human anatomy that you know we're not gonna, I don't touch in my A and P in, in, in this class either. And then you can see, you know, I'm an ecologist, evolutionary biologist, herpetology. Here I am implanting uh, radio transmitters and rattlesnakes. And I've taken students around the world twice to the Galapagos Islands scuba diving in Australia, so scuba diver setting club advisor to here, and then Borneo and Madagascar. So yeah, I love to travel, love the tropics. Lived in Brazil when I was a kid. My dad still lives down in, in, in Brazil, so yeah. And I actually taught a, a senior uh, kind of capstone course, uh, plagues and people are looking at disease and culture and uh, seeing how, um, uh, how disease and, and impacts culture. And it's so strange to live through a pandemic because this class I taught was all about the, you know, the flu in, in 1918, this, this big pandemic. And now uh, we're actually seeing this and, you know, and I, some of the disaster or the way we uh, have uh, uh, approached it in the US uh, in the past anyway. All right. And of course, I've got a great interest in all types of biology. So. You guys find any skulls, any turtles, anything uh, interesting, even plants and insects. That's kind of that's kind of my thing. All right. So again, histology was something I, I, I took in college, and then I ended up teaching it, and so uh, I love it. And you know, I keep I throw it into AMP all the time because you know you have to understand normal anatomy and histology to understand pathology and disease. And a pathologist in, in the hospital usually. They look at a lot of tissues, and so they get a slice of skin to see if the cells are cancerous and, and things like that. So uh, they, 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 they make a career out of it. All right, so pathology, pathophysiology. Um, you guys interested in nursing, any kind of healthcare at all, it's, it's your job, it's what you do, you know? And um, so this class is not something that you have to check off, you know, something in the core or some exploration or something. This is, this is the meat and potatoes. This is um, what you are going to, to deal with. And uh, we cannot, in, in not only a semester, six weeks, go through all the diseases of the world. And, and, and uh, we'll go through the pathology, but we don't have a, a lot of the, the clinical end of it, you know. It's, you know it takes a lifetime to, to, to learn, you know, uh, uh, all these things. And it certainly takes you know, years of education to get somewhat competent, but we're going to cover it. We're going to cover, you guys are going to remember back in, in pathophysiology when you learn the basics, we're going to get 
the terms. So you have the vocabulary, the lexicon of, of health professionals and diagnosis and prognosis and what a symptom and a sign and all these things are. And then um, we'll look at, uh, again, the, the big kind of overwhelming what inflammation and disease is. And then we'll get look at the most common things you're going to encounter in, in, in at least in the US, most common diseases that you're gonna find in patholo path pathological states. And we'll go through all the organ systems, fascinating from the eye, the breast, to the kidneys, to the heart, you know, all these things uh, hitting the best of. And at the end, we'll look at, you know, we'll look at autoimmune diseases, we'll look at diseases that you know, go through more than one organ that affect them, and even look at mental health issues and nutritional things at the end. So big, broad thing that we're looking at. And uh, the book, book is great. It's uh, concise, yet uh, does a good job of uh, covering all these topics. All right, I'm going to ask you guys your first question. This is, I think some of these slides from when I begin a and too, so some of you may remember this from a year ago, but uh, this is a picture of what organ? It's the underside of a liver, and uh, it's got cirrhosis. So you look at this immediately, you know, something's not right if you're versed in what a normal liver looks like. And here's another liver for you. And what do you think is going on there? Cancer. So all this white is uh, tumors, cancer. We'll talk about this pretty quickly. We'll get into this. And also how probably this liver cancer originated in the colon or elsewhere and spread here. Um, but the point is uh, cancers, we call them neoplasms, um, are gonna be uh, a way that kills you because not because the cells are toxic, they're your own cells, but they're just so screwed up and divide so quickly that they take over the normal liver tissue and you die from a lack of a liver. All right, so stepping back, um, anatomy is anatomy, all right? You're describing a structure. You can look at gross anatomy, things you can see, your own eyes, or microscopic anatomy, histology or even get down to the biochemistry of it, right? There's it's, it's all these, life is hierarchical with these levels. Um, physiology is looking at the function. And um, of the two, you know, we're not discovering a lot of new bones, a lot of new organs, you know, or, but physiology is changing rapidly because with new tools, computers, uh, microscopes, uh, a lot of genetic work, we're just learning more and more of, uh, of uh, how uh, the chemistry of our body works. And we are just a bag of salt water with chemicals and reactions are what life is. So this pathology uh, generally means disease. It's a study of disease. Um, and it, we'll talk about, first lecture I'll talk about disease, but uh, dis-ease, something is not right, okay? It's a structural or functional issue that's going to cause a problem. And uh, looking at pathogenesis or pathophysiology is so we're looking at how that, that disruption in the normality of, of your body's functioning or structure, how that progresses as a disease and how it, the clinical manifestations of that. So normally a person seeks healthcare when they show symptoms and signs, and uh, it means the disease has progressed to that point. So you can, uh, yeah, you can have COVID and be asymptomatic, you know, but uh, it could progress to, to more. So pathophysiology, pathophysiology, pathology, a study of disease and um, pathophysiology, looking at the, the, the changes that take place in that progression of the disease. And diseases can be, you know, external, it can be a bacteria and viruses, or like that cancer, it's actually your own cells. The, the cells can change from some external factor, microwaves or uh, something like that, or it could just be uh, air and cell division without any external factor at all. All right, well, looking at uh, the human body, that's what we're looking at. This is human pathophysiology, right? Um, I was a big office fan, big crush on Pam, you know, but looking at uh, what I'm talking about here is the human body, thinking of it as, uh, as perfection. And it's a common mistake among uh, people They'll look at the, the human eye, the human heart, and go, oh my God, this is perfect, you know, and uh, uh, how did this come about? But the point is, we are not, we are far from perfect. Um, we work, and it's amazing. The eye, the heart are absolutely complex and amazing, and the chemistry is amazing. But 
we are just a, a product of millions of years of evolution. And so you see things like um, um, uh, our jaws being too small and it, people have problems with wisdom teeth. Um, we see an appendix that, that uh, often causes us uh, big problems. That's a remnant of a larger colon in our, in our ancestors. And uh, even the chemistry is, goes through these strange directions to get where it's got to go. And we get to where you need to go, but it's not the easiest path. It's because our bodies have evolved while we're alive. So we can't just stop our bodies and like get a new blueprint and build a new body. It's like working on a car that has to be kept running. So if it stops running, you go extinct. So the species is going, small changes have taken place over time, and we end up where we are. Over 80% of people have back problems in their lifetime and, and knee problems are a big problem too. Where we're walking upright is a relatively recent, in millions of years, a relatively recent thing. And uh, we evolved from a ancestor look more like your dog or cat that walks on all fours. And so um, what I wanna say is that if you guys are looking, you know, the body for the answers to, to, um, um, to, to seeing, you know, expecting everything to work great and everything to make sense, you're gonna be disappointed. Again, this is a big picture thing, but we are the product of millions of years of evolution. There's a lot of compromises. We carry with it a lot of junk. Of our DNA, 98% of it is junk. It's just a bunch of A's and T's that mean nothing. But we carry this along with us because uh, we can't get rid of it. And um, uh, a lot of things about our anatomy and physiology don't expect them to make perfect sense. They make sense because looking at our history, but if you were to design a person, you would not make it like this. You would make things a little uh, perform better. And that's uncomfortable for some people. <laughs> I, I'm, I'll, I'll admit that it's uncomfortable for, for some people that want to think that, you know, we are at the top of this ladder of evolution or not even, we didn't even evolve. People think that we're just these special uh, creatures. But um, if you study humans long enough, you study animals and, and life long enough, you, you, you figure out that uh, that's, uh, wishful thing, thinking at best if you want to think that. that big picture stuff. Now, why the hell do I have a keyboard in front of you now? All right, if you look in front of your keyboard, well, your phone, whatever you, you... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Your keyboard looks like this. And the top, it says Q-W-E-R-T-Y, QWERTY uh, keyboard. And um, you would think that this keyboard, uh, would be the most efficient. You would have the, the letters you use the most would be at the home row in the middle, and then with the strongest fingers, especially the right hand, most people are right-handed. So you'd have the, the, whatever letters you use the most in language would be right here and not like, you know, here, where you have to stretch with your pinky finger, right? Someone certainly designed the keyboard. All around the world, we use the same combination of letters. And it's not A, B, C, D, E. So someone came up with this and it must be the best, right? I'm gonna blow your mind. And again, if you had me for AMP, I've already told you the story, but this is purposely not efficient because it was invented in the 1800s for typewriters like this. If you've ever seen the old fashioned typewriters, these bars come up and they hit the letters. And if you go too fast, the bars stick. You have to stop what you're doing, pull them back down, and you gotta start over again. So they separated letters that in you know, TDH that are often used um, a lot because if you did them too fast, if you're trying to sell a typewriter, it would stick. And so they purposely slowed you down. So, you know, can you kind of follow the logic? Why the hell with computers when you can go, you can go way faster than, you can go faster than the computer, no. You can go as fast as you want when you type. Why do we still use this? And is there a better way? Well, definitely. You guys can Google Dvorak keyboards. You can buy one on eBay. It's, it's, it's no big deal. But this has been scientifically, they studied this in the 30s. And they found out that this, take a look at that home row. Right and left hand. These are the keys you use most. Put the Z way down here. No one's using a Z except in zebra. And, yeah, that's all I got right now. Um, yeah, and so, um, okay, we discovered this. And it's, it's actually, you can do tests online too. For every mile that you, you move um, with the Dvorak keyboard, your fingers move, they did the study, 
you move 16 miles on the old fashioned, our keyboards that we use today. So why haven't we just go to the better keyboards? It's been known since 1936. That's just like the metric system, the pain involved in us switching is just apparently too great um, that we don't want to do it. Everyone would have to relearn it. Now you step in front of any typewriter, or any computer, and you guys can go without even looking. So the moral of the story is here is just like the human body. It works. It might not be the most efficient, but we can't completely retool it to something that works better. We have to go with what we have. And that's what evolution is. It's a running car that you're tinkering with to, to make changes and you can't stop it and go to the more efficient keyboard. All right. All right, so this uh, teaching this uh, last year, I had to uh, come up with a textbook. So they, boy, if you're a professor and you, you say you need a textbook, they send you lots of them. Um, and I uh, came up uh, with this one here. And uh, there are ones that are, uh, pathophysiology texts that are, are huge, just depends on uh, um, the audience and what, what you're looking for. This is for allied health professionals and nursing, pharmacy, uh, uh, a lot of different things. Um, yeah, and so that's what you guys need. And you have two options here. So this is where I pay attention, this is what you need to know. You, uh, oh, I guess you can go to the bookstore. Yeah, I have to say you got a bookstore, but um, you can go right here to, um, 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 who are these guys? Jones and Bartlett, that's a JV sales for Jones and Bartlett. Go to their website. And um, the cheapest version would be just to, uh, um, um, just do it electronically. It's like 60, 70 bucks, something like that. And uh, voila, you have access to the ebook. You've got a code so you can get into our class and do it. Um, I, don't know, I like reading an actual book. It depends on who you are, but not, not much more. You can uh, get the textbook. And the textbook, it's got to be a new one. Don't get a used one because if someone's used this code, you're in trouble. It has a code in it, and that allows you to do the online part. So very similar. It just depends. If you're all online kind of person, you do that. If you like having a physical one, you can get the, the book to, to read, and then you get the access with that. And so you need to do that. And uh, again, in today's world, you could do it five minutes before class. You can just go online and do it. Um, and also there's no, we're not meeting at the same time ever. And so like I say, just before class, you know, this is asynchronous. You guys I'll have post lectures, you'll have deadlines to do homework uh, quizzes and tests. And so um, just realize that it's, it's nice. You guys can do, if you're a, do it two in the morning, do it two in the morning. If you're a morning person, you can listen to lecture then. You can do it whenever you want. These things, you can do this on your phone, at the beach. Uh, and some of you I know will have some other classes you'll be studying for too. So uh, this is flexible, but you know, with this comes great responsibility. You guys have got to uh, uh, be on this. You, you have to be on it. You can't um, procrastinate because you can't cram this stuff. There's just, you know, you need to uh, keep up with the material. All right, so that that's that that explains it. So you uh, um, you're gonna get, this is going to be the book, and most importantly, you need the online access because that's where my lectures. I'll put my lectures on my YouTube channel too. Just look for Jeffrey Parmalee, and you'll see my face. And then uh, oh, I've got old last years, but I'll make a separate folder for our class with the the lectures. Um, and so you can watch it on YouTube, on your TV, wherever you want to watch it, or or I'll have uh, Zoom links right here, but you want to go to this and I'll get, you, you can't go to it now because I haven't given you the code for our class, but when you put the code in, then you'll be in our class and you'll see, um, oh, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. And then uh, everything is nicely organized. You'll just go to our class and then uh, listen to a lecture. Each chapter has a short quiz after it. And then uh, there's flashcards in there for you guys and, and uh, answers to practice questions. And so everything's there for you. As a syllabus, I just actually left it from last year. I'm just, so all these dates are off by a day, but this is pretty much um, the way we're gonna do it. And you can see, we're gonna cover this whole book. Six weeks. Yeah, we can do it. You guys can do it. You guys are pretty smart, I can tell. Actually, I can't, but I'm, I'm assuming. All right, so I could have had, uh, I have three exams. Uh, 
three exams. Um, so every two weeks, an exam over those chapters. It's like 10 chapters, eight chapters, 12 chapters, something like that. Um, and the quizzes after each chapter are pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, those points are easy, you know. Uh, I shouldn't say, if you, if you read it, the quiz questions uh, should be easy. But as you can see, we're gonna look at that. Interaction of pathology, in my first lecture, most significant diseases. Oh, that's, that's cool, I'm gonna redo that one though. Diagnostic resources, you know, look at it. lab tests, MRIs, what's a symptom, what's a sign. And then uh, injury, inflammation, repair, neoplasia or cancers, genetic and developmental problems, cool. Not cool, obviously, horrible, bad, but I'm saying interesting. And then um, we'll go on and look, we're going to look at blood and heart, clotting issues, lung, oral region, GI tract, liver, gallbladder, kidney, male and female genital organs, breast, skin, eye, bones, skeletal muscle. And AMP, we spend a lot of time on muscle, but there's not that many diseases really. Um, but so. AMP and uh, pathology, sometimes uh, there's more diseases for a certain organ system. Sometimes it takes more time to discuss them. But anyway, bones and muscles took a lot of time in AMP, is what I'm saying, and I take a less time in pathology. And then central nervous system. At the end, look at that mental illness. We'll talk yeah, again. This is not, we're going to do it in the lecture. You know, so it's just going to be a broad overview. Endocrine system, hormones. And then infectious diseases, it's going to be kind of the highlights, TB, the big things, MRSA, talk about some things that are important to the healthcare professional, um, physical, chemical, and then nutritional disorders we'll talk about at the end. Uh, yeah. So there we go. And these exams, um, again, there are going to be times, it's from a pool of questions, so everyone's a little bit different, and there'll be a certain time when you take it, I'll let you know. It'll be, it'll be over, you know, you'll be able to over a day or two, I, don't, I haven't decided that. But, um, so those exams, so you wanna get ready. Uh, we'll start uh, Monday's May 17th, and then you'll have two weeks and I'll have an exam for you. And uh, you don't wanna wait till the day before to study all those chapters, right? So you wanna keep up with these things uh, as we go along. And it's great stuff, I'm excited about this. You know, I, I teach a and I'm excited about that too, of course, but uh, now we get to look at each of these systems and look at all these cool diseases and, and things that can go wrong. Grading, quite simple. There's no papers to write, um, not a lot of, no a lot of complexity here. It's gonna be, of those 30 chapters, each one will have a quiz. That'll be 15% of your grade. And then the three exams. So it's, and the exams are multiple choice, true, false, based on that material. So we will cover a lot. We will cover a lot of material. So that's the hard part. It's not really conceptually difficult. If you pay attention to AMP, then you've got to kind of head start. Um, but it's going to be a lot of material, a lot of chapters that you need to, to know for the test. So that's really it. But I hope you guys get into it. You're going to be excited. And so for a lot of you, my God, this is you're going to be dealing with pathophysiology. That's what you deal with is people, the disease, the major disease you're going to deal with. So great, great stuff. All right, well, I wanna wrap this up, but just a few more things, just kind of big picture is looking at um, how we know about pathophysiology and, and anatomy and physiology. And of course, if you remember Galen was the, uh, the father of anatomy and he came up with this textbook um, and people followed it for over 1000 years. And whenever they found something different, they're like, eh, must be our mistake, some variation because Galen couldn't be wrong. So what I'm saying is, and then Vesalius came up and. Um, based it on actual dissections and, and corrected the mistakes. But what I'm saying is that we don't wanna base modern medicine on authorities. On uh, um, We wanna base your modern medicine, Western medicine, allopathic medicine, based on um, 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 empirical evidence, meaning things that we can test, things that are correct. And so we don't say, oh, we don't believe people just because they we think they're important. The Rembrandt dissection. And of course, all kinds of tools today. And you guys uh, taking this course, if you have, uh, I'm not offended if you cheat on me and you 
Google and look for other uh, sources to study. Maybe you want to review some AMP. You can, you know, just look at YouTube for kidney physiology. You know, all these things uh, are available to you, and uh, um, um, you know, it's it's a great thing that I didn't have. I had my textbook in the library when I was when I was uh, taking anatomy. And again, what we uh, what we are really going forward with is a lot of this physiology uh, is the uh, so much that we're learning and it's important as evidence uh, based medicine and that is we don't carry a rabbit's foot. Um, uh, even some things and I don't mean to get crazy, but acupuncture and even some aspects of, chi aspects of chiropractic where, where they go beyond you know musculoskeletal saying that they cure this and that. Uh, unless you have, you know, double blind studies that show it works, it's not medicine. <laughs> it's an alternative medicine. And, and alternative medicine just simply means that we haven't shown that it works. And if it works, it's medicine. All right. So in case, in case you guys, hey, you're just learning, some of you are just meeting me, but I, I don't have a lot of uh, patience for, um, for people, uh, you know, uh, hawking cures without evidence and, um, um, data that's just anecdotal and things like that. So, I, you know, you've, you've got to, if you're going to have a patient in your charge and you're going to give them a, a therapy, a medication, you better know that it works. You better know that it's been studied. It's been tested. You have a control group and you see that it has some positive effect. All right. So just saying that, and you will see nutritional supplements and you will see um, um, other therapies and things that are touted and they make a lot of money, but if they're not backed by evidence, then, you know, as a scientist, as a modern healthcare practitioner, uh, we can't uh, be pushing that. Uh, there's lots of good stuff to talk about. All right, so DNA especially, our, our understanding of genetics is pushing um, our knowledge. If you think about scientific knowledge, you think, oh, it's exponential. We keep, because humans can learn, we can rewrite things now, things like that. Um, and all the more scientists like that. It, just to be honest with you, it, it looks a little more like this. It's, um, and what happens here is that uh, our knowledge progresses really, really rapidly after some invention of, um, of some no, new tool like the microscope, electron microscope, or even a new idea like evolution. And there's a whole paradigm shift where we look at everything with new eyes. So new ideas and usually new technology now causes us to learn a whole bunch kind of quickly. And then it you know, plateaus a little bit. It's always going up because we keep learning more and more. And in pharmacy, now pharmacogenomics, you know, we'll look back at these days and say, oh my God, we gave chemo this poison to like all these people with cancer. In the future, we're gonna look at your genetics and we're gonna specify you know, the drugs that, that fit your genetics. And so um, you know, looking at drugs related to your genetics is, is happening now, you know, and it's going to be more and more of this as, as we learn more and more. And the ability to have functional MRI where we can get pictures of your brain blood flow as you're awake and reading or listening to music. Uh, great, great things. So yeah, we're going to go through everything. We'll look at skin. We'll talk about bumps and moles and all these weird looking things on your people's skin. And uh, we'll look at uh, osteosarcomas and nervous system. We're going to look at yeah, endocrine disruptions, oh my God, blood clotting issues, heart issues, um, respiratory, we'll talk about COVID, we'll talk about uh, lung cancer, emphysema, GI tract, talk about you know, inflammatory bowel disease and uh, ulcers and uh, gallstones. And yeah, I, you, you can learn some of this. Whew. We'll go through all these systems and we'll see what the major issues are. And rem remember that all the systems are interconnected too. So if you have a lung issue, you're gonna have an issue with the rest of your cells not getting oxygen, right? If you have a heart issue, it doesn't matter if your lungs are good, those cells are not gonna get that, that blood. So all these systems are interrelated and uh, the loss of teeth, you know, and the elder leaves and like that is gonna cause you nutritional issues. They're gonna cause issues with the rest of the system. So all these things, you know, are, we have trillions of cells that are all interdependent. And we're talking about uh, pathology, really, um, you look at some disruption in this homeostasis, right? You uh, diabetic, you can't control blood sugar, uh, but normally homeostasis would keep blood sugar within range. And um, again, I don't need to review this, but you guys know negative feedback. So yeah, so you have uh, too low a body temperature, you may shiver, you may uh, behavioral things. and. Uh, 
if your body temperature is too hot, of course, the other way, your hypothalamus senses it and it's going to make you sweat or um, put blood dilate in your skin to try to get rid of that heat. All right. And of course, you know, looking at uh, when people, they're going to come in and give you, you're going to do, uh, well, even if you're not going to be a nurse, people will tell you, oh, I have this pain, you know, upper left area. And I could probably not going to say quadrant. You guys would. But we have four quadrants, right and left and, and right and left, upper and lower quadrants. And you can even get even deeper on that. And it's a good way for someone to um, um, describe, you know, where the pain is to help you diagnose you know, what the issue is. All right, the big thing, of course, is aging. This is a cool picture. That's so cool. And a patient that is uh, geriatric takes drugs and, and heals differently than a younger patient, right? The pediatrician, on the other hand, they don't, I mean, kids don't control body temperature, all kinds of things. So do the elderly too. A lot of similarities between very young and very elderly in uh, a lot of things. Um, but you know, as a person ages, there are changes and different organ systems will um, um, age differently and cause different issues. Yeah, women live longer than men on average. Wondering why men do some stupid things. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of cool, interesting uh, ways to go with that. <clears throat> All right, last slide. All right, so, uh, Hopefully I get you guys, I mean, I need to give you the nuts and bolts of um, what book you need to get. So go to that website or the other bookstore and uh, either just order the online version or order the book that's gonna have the code within it. If it gets here in time, um, yeah, who knows? Um, yeah, Amazon Prime, I don't know what you guys do. But anyway, so you're gonna have that ready and then I'll have a code for you and then that will put you in the class. Oh, and I'll show you what it, what it looks like here at the end. All right, but uh, again, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the first lecture, what pathology is. I already talked about how you guys need to be self-motivated to learn this, to keep up with it. So just make a schedule and I'm here uh, to keep you on it. I mean, I'll, I'll give you reminders every week of what you know, I expect you, know, you to do. And you just try to, if you do that, you follow along with what you're supposed to do. Um, you can do great, you do great in this class. Um, yeah, hope you, hopefully you paid attention in that physiology. So uncomfortable people out there, yeah. Um, but uh, if not, there's kind of a review section you can look at uh, with this textbook or crack open your A&P book or look online. And then, uh, yeah, I can't say this enough. I mean, for those of you who had me before, I mean, I hope you're motivated and you're interested. I mean, you know, uh, a lot of you see school as I got to get through this to get to my job where I want to be. But um, then you look back and you will say, uh, school is pretty good. Actually, compared to the real world, but um, you need to uh, have, a, have a mindset where you want to learn this because it's interesting to you and it's important. And this is, it's the human body. I mean, you know, no matter what you do, either whether you're a nurse or not, I mean, you're going to have uh, relatives in yourself. You're going to need to understand uh, uh, these pathologies. Yeah, like I say, if you want to have a nursing intervention and if you didn't really pay attention, but you somehow made it through, um, you're gonna be very uncomfortable. You're not gonna be a good nurse, as an example, um, if you don't understand the background of why, you know, what, what's going on. So there's some motivation for you. All right, here, I will show you, uh, I got the textbook up here, don't I? Let's see, I did a lot of stuff. Here's a syllabus. Um, I cook, you don't care about that. More, let me see. I don't want that either. It's a Google over here. Some of this, oh, here we go. Teams document. Here, let me go back to this. Right to the end of it, but I'll go to that website and I'll show you. Just give you a look at this here. Here we go. And then, yeah, I'll make sure I share this with you. So, your screen sharing. Um, 
that's great that you have. Okay. Just want to absolutely make sure we're actually make sure you're looking at this. Um, now I'm pretty sure you are. Uh, see, so you'll obviously log in on your own. Uh, this is my quest. Just, here we go. So this is going to give you a little preview of what it's going to look like. Um, so, I mean, you'll see Parmalee, my picture's up there somewhere too. And um, you won't see all of this, but here, for instance, it's going to be, here's the chapters I made. you be able to see the chapters for this first test. So look at that introduction. Yeah. So each one of these folders you can open up and yeah, you can't, so you can't see this yet. I'm just gonna have you the ones for the first test, then I'll open up the next ones. So for instance, this is, um, let's say, okay, I'm ready to go, I wanna open up, I'm ready to start. I'm gonna to go to chapter one. And so introduction to pathophysiology, pathology. So I put these pictures up there. So I'll put this lecture on there. And then here's my lecture, this is a Zoom lecture. And here's the, the you put this passcode in, you just copy that and put that if you wanna watch it there, or it's on YouTube too, I'll put it two places. And then learning objectives are just gonna be right from the book. It's just the learning objectives that are found in the textbook. Uh, they make some flashcards for you. Yeah, play with those. They're, they're free, they're right there. Uh, and then you won't see that. Uh, uh, and then some web links. And then, yeah, just a couple of links, but you guys can do a great job um, um, Googling any topic that you want. And here's a chapter quiz. So see, it's just five questions, 15 minutes. Um, so when you're ready to take that quiz, you take it, take it one chance to do it. And um, yeah, and then those will add up over time. And then at the end of your each chapter, there are chapter questions. There are chapter questions in here, but there's no answers in this book. Well, I'm giving you the answers, all right? So you can click on this, it's a Word document, it has the answers. So obviously don't print out the answers and just read them, but you can check to see, to see, um, make sure you got that. All right, and so you guys will start with chapter one. And uh, when you get this, you will, you can, if you get the book, you can read it ahead of time, but um, here you're gonna listen to a lecture that I'll give on it and uh, you'll read the chapter. And this is a beautiful, um, this Navigate, the ebook, you can, you can highlight, you can make notes on it, do all kinds of things. And then you'll take the quiz, you continue for all the chapters for that first test, and you'll be ready. You can just kind of review all that and be ready for that first test. All right, I think that's about it. Take a look. Most frequent and significant diseases. Yeah, I'll record that here next few days. But here will be a lecture on it. Here'd be some uh, learning objectives. Here's the ebook. Go right there and read it and, and leave off. I mean, put bookmarks and where you left off. Yep. And then there's a quiz for each one. All right. I'll try to follow along, see if someone's not doing anything. I'll, I'll prod you to make sure you're doing that. And your grades will all be up here. See grades. So I don't know if you're at UNE, but we're going from Blackboard to Brightspace. You know, I don't think you're going to have to worry about that. I will. Um, put all your grades eventually up there, but you'll see them all here. I'll see them all here. Um, yeah. All right, no idea how long this took, but uh, um, you got a sense of, uh, of me. I think it's important to have some kind of relationship, at least you know where I'm coming from, my background. Um, uh, no kids, I have a cat. Uh, uh, yeah, live in Scarborough, so I won't be down. A bit of for campus. I mean, it's, it's going to be completely online. Uh, hopefully, the weather's nice. Do some lectures on the porch, but um, uh, recycle the good lectures, and then I'll make new ones. Where I, I feel like I need it, but so I'm here to help you guys. Uh, if you know me, some of you know me, you know that that's that's my main thing. This is these six weeks. I'm available anytime for you guys to help you succeed. On your end, you need to read it keep up with it, take your notes, and I hope get immersed in this and uh, um, be interested in it and, and do ask me questions. And again, happy to Zoom anytime. You can uh, shoot me an email, obviously, and we'll just set up a time. And uh, uh, if, you, if you need any specific help or, yeah. All right, gonna end this. Um, excited, you know, excited to get this started and uh, all that you guys have ahead of you, it's gonna be good. All right.